Uh, we're here on the south side of Denver, about five miles from downtown, and have been since the 1880s. Late 1880s, construction started, and by 1894, the building was up and running with its telescope. The skies were a lot darker back then, and the city has grown up around it in the meantime, but we're still here plugging away. It's the only thing like it for a thousand miles in any direction. You know, there are other college observatories, but none of this vintage and of this size and uh, capability. We have a classic refractor telescope, and the main thing about telescopes is characteristic called a focus length or focal length. Uh, most cameras are 50 millimeter type focal length. Our telescope upstairs is 7,500 millimeter focal length. So that gives us a lot of magnification potential. And so the most amazing views are typically the planets, the moon, brighter objects where we can get a lot of detail. And those things aren't so affected by the horrific light pollution problem we have, but we can still pierce through all that glow and see great detail on planets. Um, about a decade ago, we had a close approach of Mars. It happens every 20-ish years, and uh, you know everyone was amazed by the quality of those views. When I arrived in the 90s, 1990s, last century, uh, the building was uh, falling apart. Uh, the roof was leaking, the basement was crumbling. Uh, it needed some serious attention, so I made it a point to start to mobilize whatever help I could find, and eventually that led to uh, some significant money, well, after landmark status was granted, we had access to state historic funding for uh, restoration particularly. We got two infusions of, of order quarter million to fix up the place. Um, in parallel we've also found the money to improve, repair the telescope to make sure it's working as well as it can for a 120 year old instrument and uh, so I think today we're in as good shape as a building uh, as we've been for decades. It predates a lot of things we take for granted. Of course uh, it predates the internet and computers, it predates TV, it predates radio, even predates electricity in Denver. So originally the whole system was manually driven, weight, uh, wound up clocks and things, uh, all independent of electrification. Uh, this slit operation is still fairly manual. This dial is designed to let us know where in the sky we are pointed. And in fact, we also make use of a modern equivalent um, computationally with indicators on the axles. We can track where the telescope's pointing. So for example, if I start to move the telescope, you can see on both the dial here, as well as on the screen, that we're just passing in this case, 90 degrees north, which happens to be the location of bright star Polaris, the pole star. And so this outer dial is giving us the latitude-like figure where we're pointing in the sky. And then the inner dial lets us get the longitude-like information. Uh, and that is telling us on a star map what might be expected to be there at any particular time. Uh, as a professionally trained astronomer, feel obliged, having worked in, seen, uh, dealt with other antique observatories and antique astronomers for that matter, elsewhere and elsewhere, uh, just seemed necessary to make sure this place had some kind of a future.